hello. Um, hello. You guys hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. Okay. Uh, thanks for doing this at this late hour. Um, I'm Jonita Davis with the Black Cape. Um, and I just, I am going to, I want you guys to kind of talk about this. This um, show is called Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. But we're talking about um, a storyline that revolves around Simon. Mm -hmm. So one of my first questions is, um, first of all, let's, you know, talk about the episode a little bit. And then I want to, you know, kind of shift toward creating a storyline for a black man in, in a show, in a show that like features this white woman without causing the, you know, the, all those little problems that could go there. I mean, how did you, I want to know how you navigated all that. So we can go right well, there first if you want. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So right off the jump, I think the first person to take the swing at that having to craft and crack the code on this given the structure of Zoe is Zora. Because yeah, like that's a I mean that's a conversation that you all you all have been had. Like you all had to really that's a deft balance with the structure of the show. Yeah, we we definitely did, you know, and, and it was a challenge because not only is it called Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, but we don't see musical numbers unless it's from her point of view. Right. Mm -hmm. And so how do you tell a story about anti-black racism in the workspace um, with just through the perspective of this white woman. Um, and we found an opportunity in that, I think like early in the process, we're like, okay, this is difficult, but if this is a show about a woman, a white woman who's learning how to be more empathetic, this is one of the key lessons that she's gonna learn on her journey. And so how are we gonna see her stumble and fall and learn about these things, but not really understand the context and try to help and mess up again. And, you know, slowly we sort of crafted this, this story together, but really it had to be through the lens of her continuing, continuously stumbling along the way, which a lot of what my white friends have done you know, and, and my uh, friendships and, and just these kinds of awkward scenarios, especially like at work and, you know, just dealing with racism. So that's, that's kind of, it, it was, it was a challenge, but it was also, um, I think it worked to our benefit. Okay. Did you guys have, what kind of serious concerns did you have in the beginning or doubts? Did you have any doubts about it, about the storyline? I'll let you take that one, John. <laughs> but, so here's the thing. My, my thing is a few things. One, it's always extraordinary playlist and it doesn't stop being always extraordinary playlist, right? And so like what we have to do is make sure that everything, every beat and every step is earned. One of my concerns was that we weren't going to be in a space where we were earning moments, that we were just gonna gloss over things or soften her so soften her and other white people in the show so much that it that that where we wanted to go wasn't justified. And then we just come off like a bunch of black people in a show using the device to sing, to sing black songs. And that is not what I wanted. And that's not, that's not what Zora wanted, that's what, not what anyone wanted. Um, because the conceit of the show is that we get to hear these, these heightened emotional songs. And we have this gift with the choice to use all black artists to have these, these, these songs that get to the guts of, these, um, of the, the, the heart of what all these black and brown people are feeling in the show. But the thing is, in order to unlock that, you have to earn it. That was my concern. When I, when I was told back in June, July from Austin that we were gonna do this in the show, and he was asking me about what my thoughts were and stuff like that, and um, I was giving him feedback, my, I was worried that we weren't going to go far enough. And um, uh, I was worried that I was going to end up being part of the canon of stories told about the black experience by white people that don't really touch the nerve in the way that um, in the way that matters to me and what I'm I'm happy to report back live <laughs> um, what I'm happy to report back is that like in this process we've it's it's not been it's not been easy it's been it's been labor but I think that art is labor um, a show like this, a subject matter like this, when it's told the right way, causes things to come up 
And it takes a brave showrunner. It takes brave creators to make space for all that dissonance and have those conversations. Zora, you're privy to so many of the conversations I wasn't privy to, mm -hmm. but like having these conversations and informing and guiding and taking up a lot of space, space that as a, as a black man and an actor on a network TV show, most times you're told to just like stay in your lane. Like it's, we hired you, this is your job, do your job over there. And that's the gig. And you just go, okay, keep my head down, do the thing. But with this, everybody, myself included, felt a, a huge responsibility. Um, stories are not, stories are incredibly powerful. That's the means, that's how we dream. That's how we know what can be. And I think that Zora, Austin, Jane, myself, everybody involved is keenly aware of the power of story and keenly aware of the unique power of this show with music and story. So, yeah. Yeah. Gosh, that was a great answer. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> just, to, just to add to that, you know, John. <laughs> it's late. It's late. And I'm sorry, I didn't even realize that, Zara, you were going to start talking. But, but yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off. But yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, sorry. it's all good. Um, just sparking ideas. Uh, well, no, just because, you know, we, we all get the story at, at different points, you know, but I think one of my early concerns was that in order to do the story, did we have to do an episode that was special that was from purely from Simon's perspective? And what would that episode be like? And would it be so different that you wouldn't be able to hear these musical numbers from this white woman's perspective? And, and so what do you lose in someone expressing a feeling and an emotion without words, you know, that's something that, that's so deep. And so again, it's that gift of like, oh, well, how, how could we use this, um, these, these boundaries that, that we have to make it special and to make it about someone who is, is really learning a very hard lesson, but on the, the flip side of that, to be able to tell a story that's, that's so honest and for that to not be edited and, and, I think that was probably like my biggest concern as, as a writer is like, can I be hyper specific and, and honest about what, it, what it's felt like for me to be in white spaces? What, what, what has been said to me? What it feels like to be a first generation African in this country mm. and can it, can it be understood? And so, you know, it, it, with the concerns that we had, I think because it was labor, you know, and I'll echo, I'll echo that it was, it was labor. And, and, you know, this episode was under a, a level of scrutiny that I think doesn't happen <laughs> very often um, <laughs> is that everyone was, was all in, you know, once we got to the point where we're like, we're going to do this, the writers were in Austin Winsberg, the creator was in the actors, like everyone, the, our director, everyone was in and um, our choreographers. So yeah, you know, it, it was, <laughs> it got uncomfortable, but I'm glad that it did because it, it gave it the realness. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm loving to, to hearing this. I want to, I want to know, um, going back a little bit before, you know, you get to the labor part that you stressed, um, where did the idea for this episode come from? Who wanted to, to jump into this you know, um, or whose idea was it, or was it just a natural part of the show to just jump into this direction? Um, well, this I think it was timing, you know, I, again, I mean, these are experiences that, that we have had all our lives. Um, but we started our writer's room about three weeks after George Floyd in late June. Um, many companies, corporations, theaters, um, spaces and entertainment were in the process of a reckoning. And this was a constant topic of conversation that would come up in the room as we were blue skying the, the season. Also, we ask actors for feedback in terms of what, how can we show your journey and, and, and give it depth. Um, and the great part of our show is that we include a lot of back and forth and 
conversation with with our cast and john part of your early conversations with austin um was about e expressing what it, what it feels like to be black in these spaces and it was kismet in in, in that we were having these conversations simultaneously and the more we had these conversations, the more we were like, there needs to be a reckoning within the world of Zoe's in terms of the characters and the way that Zoe has treated and sort of leaned on her black friends and not fully acknowledged them. There was a reckoning due in that world. If we're to be very honest with a woman that's learning empathy and so as we continued to con the conversation, we, it, it became apparent that we needed to go there. And if mm. we didn't, it, it would be not fully being honest with who these people are and also a wasted opportunity of a moment when people are finally listening mm. to things that we've wanted to say for a very long time. For sure. Okay. Yeah. I feel like um, as well, it's, you know, one of the things that, and to your point like about what it's been and what it is to be black in these predominantly white spaces and um, realizing that the, the journey that I was going through at that time in June, July was kind of this, this awareness of how much of myself I'd sacrificed in white spaces over the years. And this, this reckoning inside of my own body of uh, what it is to be in a space and to have people acknowledge me as John, but just as John, but not black John, when everything is happening in the world and I'm not thought of as being at a, affected by everything happening in the world. I'm thought of as, hey, let's talk about what's going on in the world, not, hey, John, black man who is also experiencing everything happening in the world and is a part of everything that's happening in the world. And realizing for me, I remember talking to a friend of mine and he, he was like, John, like, are you fully showing up in space though, bro? He was like, if people are looking at you and they, if people are, talking to you and they're not associating you with everything that's going on in the world and what parts of you are leaving, are you leaving out of the equation when you're in space? And I had to wrestle with that. And that's something that um, I felt like Simon being in, in this space, being in this show, having lived through the entire first season and um, having been in Spark Point, uh, being a black executive in this very white space in Silicon Valley and in San Francisco and like doing like, what is, how did he make it this far? Like, how did he get here? And then realizing, wow, there's, I, I liken it to like the thousand natural shocks that the flesh is heir to, right? That's how I feel it is. You, you have all of these things that are just the price of living. It's just the price of living. And then you have a moment in the world that lives, we're in pandemic times and all these different things where not only white people, Black people, myself, I, I, I'm stopped in my tracks and like all of the shocks catch up to me. And then I have to reckon with who I've been in these spaces. And then how am I going to show up now? Now that I'm, now that I can feel, now that I'm allowing myself, um, now that I have the room to process the traumas. Um, and I think that Simon is in that space and it's, it's a, it's a gift to have the tool of Zoe's. It's a gift to have a mind like Zora's, like, like weaving and crafting this narrative. Um, I feel just gifted to be in the space of embodying your words. And it's, an, and it's also very much a gift. And I got to give credit where credit is due. A lot of my friends who are working on shows who are attacking or talking about race, they're you know, higher ups or their bosses or showrunners. It's a very different experience than to what I have experienced on our show. There is, there's a lot of space that was carved out for us as creators and creatives and collaborators. 
um, a lot of space was carved out for us. And uh, a lot of listening was done. A lot of learning was done. And that is the, in my opinion, that's the only way white bodies can tell stories that are centered around or centering black people um, without causing trauma to black bodies. That's the only way to do it in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in even having those conversations in that moment, right? You know, cause we had touched base, you know, we met on Zoom during that time when we're both sort of unpacking all this and then having these conversations art, artistically and creatively with the people that we're working with. And it was so important and crucial for me to just be on a Zoom call with another black man talking about a similar and, and shared experience and having it crystallize to the point where, you know, that scene of, of Zoe and Simon in Simon's office is really a crystal, it's a crystallization of, of a lot of what we talked about in the shared experience that we've both had in those spaces. And the word that rang in, in my brain when we spoke was this idea of having to remove part of yourself. Amputating, yes. Amputating. There's pain in that. It's, it's, it implies that you're removing something that is supposed to be there and that is yeah. essential to yourself. And that's why to me, I was like, we have to use that word. It's, it's, it's the most visceral way to describe what it feels like. And if we hadn't had that conversation, again, this is how I felt, but it, it took that conversation of us talking to even really land on that, that word because I couldn't have described it better, you know, and, and I'm glad we used it and, and it and it felt so real in that moment. And so, um, yeah, just thank you for just breathing life in that, into that moment, because it was just one of those crazy things that happens when writers and actors work together and they're collaborating together. And it's like, oh, well, we're, there's like a connection happening here. Absolutely. There's, there's this, I just, one more thing real quick. There's this, no, like, when we talk about, when we talk, okay, cool. So when we talk about amputating, Zora, I, I mean, implying that there is something that we, that is supposed to be there, right? There's this, when you, when something is amputated, there's this idea of the phantom limb, right? The phantom limb that you still feel the pains of the thing that's been sacrificed, right? You still feel all those pains. You still experience all of these sensations and all of these things, but then you look and you've already given it up you know, and this feeling of like being a black body in space and feeling the pain of a thing, but then realizing that that's what you gave up in order to be here. You just, I mean, it's like, ah, that hurts, but I, you know, I, like, I, I cut off half of my heart and leave it at the door every day. So that's what it is. Um, and it's yeah. always missing. And it's always going to be missing. Yeah. Which is, Anyway, bro, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was profound. Oh my God. So um, uh, <laughs> I was I was going to ask about your collaboration together. So we're going to click that question off. Um, <laughs> I want I want to know is this. <laughs> um, I want to know is this a one and done? You know, type of. Are we going to pull out from Simon and we're done, or you know, can we expect more of this kind of? magnification on you know on your character in these ways um that you know kind of was the needle a little bit I think in racial conversations on um the show and in shows on the the, the network can we expect mm. more you know that is always the the number one follow-up question after what's going to happen after this I I do hope it does open a door um, to acknowledging this part of Simon, this essential part of Simon, to really see more parts of him um, and to be honest with, with who he is and, and who he is in relation to everyone else on the show. Um, it certainly sends him in a, in a direction and on a journey that wouldn't have happened had this experience not happened um, at work, but also between him and Zoe, uh, you know, again, it's, it's a show about 
Zoe in this conflict that she has between who, which guy is she going to choose? You know, is she going to be with this guy? Is she going to be with this guy? And so it's, it's still a show about that. And so how do you balance those things when you're, you're telling stories that don't always have to do with that? Mm. And that is a challenge, but I will always advocate and I hope to advocate in any show that I'm, that I'm writing for is that even when you're not trying to do it, that you still acknowledge it. Even if it is in the subtleties, if it's in, a, in an action line, through action, emotion, or dialogue, that that piece is never forgotten. And I don't think it's something that you have to really harp on if you're being very honest. I agree with that. I, I think that it's, it's not something to be harped on. I also think that one of the things that I'm, you know, I'm excited to continue discovering as we continue to get drafts and continue learning of like what's going on and where Simon goes, because the truth is, I don't know. And that's all good. Um, Cause it's part of it as well. It's like, well, I'm learning as things go along. Um, but one thing that even in, even as we continue um, that it, things don't have to be hard to I think there's also this like idea of, you know, this, this, the specificity of uh, like, if, even if there's like, you know, the actions and there's the tops and bottoms of things, like the specificity of like what is happening, like tells, like tells the audience for me tells the audience that like this thing is still continuing right and and i think that we're in good hands as far as that's concerned we're in the best hands possible you know um hands that are weaving very intentionally and deftly this story and um zora in the writer's room i know that like there's a there's a every but there's like a our writer's room from my understanding is like very all hands on deck very collaborative very like it's everybody is brilliant and everybody's bringing all that they bear to the table. So I have the utmost trust and faith that this is not one of those scenarios where um, we're going to have, it's not to completely a capsule situation, um, a capsule episode where, you know, it's like you drive off to a place, the thing happens, the boogie monsters, there you come back and it's like, we killed the boogie monster. So we did it. Now okay. let's get back to business as usual. I think that I think that we're we're uh, we're ahead of that as a as an entity, um, as a unit, and what we're going to find, and and what I hope to continue seeing, is in all the in any character that I play is just like the breadth of humanity. Like I think that's what this thing is about. Really, it's about using using the tool and the structure of Zoe's to explore and excavate the humanity in all of these different characters and. I think you're going to see some really dope things happen and the humanity and other people. And the art continues with everyone throughout in very subtle ways. Um, I think it's gonna be a very powerful rest of the season. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I, I, I love that. Um, I do have one, one more question about all this. This is like an amazing dynamic you have. Is there been any effort to kind of replicate what, you know, the, the, the teaching and the learning and the, the, you know, kind of the, the, you know, the relationship between creators and, and the actors um, for other shows on the network. Um, have you guys, has there been any thought of doing that? Because this sounds so amazing and it, and it led to such a great product. I'm just wondering, you know, is there a way or ha has there been any thought toward replicating kind of what you guys did here? Well, th this experience will certainly be something that I draw upon in, in the future. I mean, I, I can't speak for other shows, but I, I do know that Austin, you know, very early on told me, you know, I like to really speak and, and collaborate and hear from the actors. It, it really helps me in, in adding depth and, and specificity. Uh, the reason why I just really took to that and why I've loved the experience and why I would carry it forward and wherever I go is that... Um, you know, I came up in sketch comedy and, and in theater and, and I am used to sort of that give and take, that back and forth, that, that, that tension that can create really beautiful things when it's like, what if it's like this? What if it's like this? What if we, it, there, there should be that kind of like lock and step um, to me. And, you know, 
certainly, you know, going forward, Zoe's is going to have that. And, and as we get closer and closer with, with the cast, it's just that that relationship is going to only deepen. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I don't know, like, you know, every show is different. And, and to me, it's, it only, it only strengthens the material. And it just, it reminds me of more of, of that, that live theater experience, you know, because uh, yeah, you, you have to have that, that sort of give and take, right? Like it, it has to, you have to challenge each other. And also you have to be of, of one mind in, in a way um, towards the end product. And, and yeah, I, I, I will certainly in moments draw upon this to be like, okay, this is, I, I got to speak to these people about this and I, I need this input because it's, it's crucial, especially for, for a topic that is so close to all of our experiences and, and real emotions. Absolutely. And for me, I feel like this experience has changed me. It's, it, it's changed me and how I approach my work as an actor. Because for a long time, I mean, you're, as an actor, now I consider, my, I'm, I'm an artist who acts, you know? I'm an artist who acts and in Zoe's, I get to bring to bear different parts of my artistry, singing, dancing, acting, etc. cetera. Um, it's, of the utmost importance for me in my life and career moving forward to be a great collaborator, working with, building with. Um, and, you know, everybody works differently. You know, I think that that is, I, I love that you said that, Zora, everybody works differently. Every show works differently. There are some entities who work very differently. And, um, but I, I love being a part of process. I love bringing all of myself to bear in, in the flushing out of character and story and arc and all of these different things. Um, so moving forward on you know, other projects and things, I, I'm excited to bring this new confidence to bear because I haven't had the confidence to speak up for a long time. Um, it's, it, it, even, even when I have a showrunner and writers who are who are like hey what do you what's your experience what are you thinking how are you feeling in my mind i always think okay that's the trick the trick is that you want me to say something and then you're going to listen to me and then you're going to like you're going to be like uh-huh yeah that's what you really think and then you're going to use it against me you know um but i'm learning the power and really showing up in spaces um and specifically when the story that I'm telling, and you know, I, I'm really fortunate as an actor to be working on a show, working, playing a character that I believe in, in my soul. I mean, we don't always, we don't always get that. Um, we bring our instruments and tools to bear to tell many a story, but it's not all the time that it aligns with who we are and why we feel like we're here in the world. And I love working on shows playing characters that align with that and moving in the future I plan to bring all of me to bear in every scenario um it's i'd rather i'd rather have everything on the table and and know that it doesn't work right for what we're doing for whatever reason than to be quiet and to be to be quiet and then to be doing the thing, having everything that I could have put on the table in the back of my head. I'd much rather be on the other side. Um, and that's the thing as well about collaboration is it's a conversation. He, a lot of times for me, I don't know the answers. The answers are found in community. They're found in a dialogue, they're found in the, the back and forth. And most times um, if I have an idea it's only strengthened by, like you said, Zora, by the, the tension or by the dialogue or by it's deepened. Uh, my understanding deepens in dialogue. So yeah, I think that we are, we're fortunate to have some brilliant people. Like we have a brilliant, everybody's flipping wonderful all around. Like, and um, so many people in our cast and in the show and everybody is they're doing their own work and their own time. 
they're bringing all of that to bear. Um, moving forward, I plan to show up a lot more and do everything I can to just tell the truth, man. That's what we're supposed to. Do. That's it's just telling the truth. It's just trying so to get to the truth. Yeah, it? yeah, you just, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> like, are we yeah. telling the truth right now? That's what it is. Absolutely. Thank you guys, both of you. And even after the show, you guys have such a great chemistry. I just want to say that you, you have to do like more t- together. I mean, even, you know, once the show run has run its course, I mean, just give us more. And, and, and I don't know if John remembers the last time I, last time I interviewed you, I, I, we talked about a possibility of like a, an album or something. I'm still hoping. All right. All right. So here's a few things. Here's a few things that, I, a few things that I'm going to, I'm going to say right here. Right. <clears throat> I mean, you know, I've said this to many people, so I might as well do it in public in front of everybody. So, um, one, uh, I'm working on an album of covers of songs. So that's one thing. Two, um, mm-hmm. I have a book proposal that I just finished that's going out at the end of this week. And so, like, I'll be sending out a book proposal to different editors and stuff like that. Um, and it's a, it, the working title is um, Soft As It Began. It's about my experience as a, my experience as a black man getting back to my softness and vulnerability and my journey through masculinity and all of this stuff using the archetype of the minotaur a lot and so um those are some things that are going on uh and i'm excited to see where the rest of this thing goes yeah can't wait for oh, it okay <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what it is, man. yeah no 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 i'm 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 gonna I can't wait for all of it. You was not expecting a, all that. I was like, <laughs> he, was like he was like, yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> door, I'm gonna show up fully. That's, I done told you, sis. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate both of y'all. Thanks for like you know hanging on and letting me talk to you this late at night. Um, and for being so candid. I mean, come on now. I had a whole thing, a card full of questions and y'all were just ticking them off like going you know and I just felt like I was just watching this great conversation which is great it's amazing so like you know um I I know everybody's gonna love the episode everybody that I bring to this show loves the show um so you guys are awesome and like I said thanks again thank you thank you thank you for thank you giving us the space no problem yes yeah (laughs) you guys have a good night okay All right. Thanks. Thanks.